Hey YouTubians, it's Tony here from We Try Anything, channel likes Try Anything, so you don't have to. Today's video is going to be a tutorial video for the Casio LWS200H, which has a module number of 3197. Now to start things off, this watch is what's known as a tough solar watch. So the idea is, is that obviously what you've got around the actual bezel part or the inner bezel part, the digital display, what's here is a solar array. Now, what I would say is to keep the watch in bright light as much as you can. Um, and this allows the battery to recharge over a certain amount of time. And obviously what happens is with the battery, when it gets to certain levels, so for example, what you'll see indicated there is H, which refers to that it's at a high part of the battery charge. When that starts to deplete, when it, if it hasn't received any form of light or sunlight, it starts to go to medium, low, and then obviously indicating that it needs a charge, etc. When it starts at high, you've got all the functions available on this watch. When it gets to medium, you've got all the functions available. But when it gets to low, you'll have most of the functions available except for the alarm and the light, which I'll show you later. So I just thought I'd mention about this tough solar. What I tend to do is I tend to put it in a uh, windowsill which has good sunlight directed at it and then that should help to charge this watch. So that's just a little part about how to manage your tough solar part of this watch. Now the next thing I'm going to start to show you or talk about will be the buttons and what will be explaining the display of this watch. So the buttons what you've got is you've got four metal pushes so you've got two to the left and two to the right. The, the indication of what they do is obviously mentioned as you can see here in the lettering that's on the front of the case. So obviously you've got the mode button here which allows you to go through the many modes that this watch has. Um, you've got the adjust button if you keep your finger on for a couple of seconds allows you to adjust certain parts of the watch or certain things that you're looking to set within what would be the countdown timers, the alarms, etc. You have the light function here, which I'll show, show you about in a minute. And then you have what would be start and stop. Now, certain operations aren't carried out with this button in certain modes. So obviously timekeeping mode, this doesn't do anything. But if you are adjusting something, then obviously you can move the values up and down using these two buttons again which I'll show you in a bit and you can do other things with different buttons in different modes. So I just thought I'd talk, show you the, what the pushes do and the also on the back it does also mention what each of the pushes do as well. The display of this watch it, it's quite easy to understand. What you've got the top left hand corner you've got the various uh, levels of battery charge so as i've mentioned high medium low and i do believe that you will get a indicator that says charge etc on the right hand side what you've got is what's known as the alarm indicator so what you'll have is a bell at the top right hand corner you'll also have the alarm activation just underneath it in between that you have the day of the week now this will also change depending on what mode you're in it will just kind of explain what it is and then it shows different parameters of each of the modes. Underneath that, what you've got is P. Now this watch will do 12 and 24 hours. So if you're in the 24 hour part, the P won't be indicated. It'll just be 1200 hours. And then if you do go up to one o'clock, it will go be in, in the afternoon, it will be 1300 hours, etc. But in this instance, it's 12 hours. So the P is indicated there. If it's AM, you won't see any indication there. It's just, it'll just be when it's in an afternoon scenario. You've got the hour, you've got the minute, and then you've got the second. Now above that is daylight saving time that this watch has. Now that can be turned on and turned off via the adjust button, which I shall show you how to do in a minute. But that allows the watch to either uh, to increase in one hour when you turn it on and decrease in one hour when you turn it off. And DST just stands for daylight saving time. Underneath that you have what is the year, you have the month within the year, and you have the date within the month. And obviously it's showing you the day of the week at the top. Now there's no way of changing that over, so that is literally how Casio presents the date information on the timekeeping mode. Underneath that you've got PS, now what PS stands for is power saving mode. Now I've got that turned on for this watch because sometimes this watch will sit in a drawer for a, a period of time or in the dark. And what happens in power saving mode, if the watch detects or that it's doing nothing, then the, the display will blank until it detects some form of light hitting the watch from my understanding. So that's what power saving mode is. And that's really the display in the nutshell. I mean, obviously you will see some various other items on the display as I go through the modes, but I will explain them 
as I go through. So the next thing to start talking about is how to adjust the time and date on the Casio LW200H. Right, let's show you how to operate what would be the time and date or how to adjust the time and date on this watch. And I'll also mention some other things that you can change while you're going through the adjustment part. So make sure you're in the main timekeeping mode, which obviously shows your local time and the date, etc. If you keep your finger on what is the adjust button to the top left hand corner, you'll hear a bleep and what will happen as long as you've got the mute button uh, mute option turned off which I'll show you how to turn on in a second what you'll start to see is I've got here the words LON at the top or the letters LON at the top now that refers to London because what you're going to set first will be the city that you're in now to do that obviously make sure that it's flashing now what you can do is press the start to go forward or the back uh, light button at the top to go backwards so say for example you was in Paris then you'd set that as your city that you're viewing the local your local time or that you're going to adjust your local time to now the reason why you do this is that it, it acts as a setup for the world time so whatever you set here all the other cities and the other time zones in the world time mode will adjust accordingly so in this case we're going to go back to london i mean obviously i believe there's obviously i think there's about 48 cities that you can go through on this um but obviously we're going to keep with london in this instance now once that's once you're happy with that what you then do is press mode and that will go to a thing called it says on in this instance now it may be off or, or it may be on now what the off what that refers to is as you can see there you've got dst flashing now that is daylight saving time so whether you go forward an hour or backward an hour depending on the time of the year you know when the clocks go forward or when the clocks go back that is an option that will just change the hour without you having to go through the total time change on this watch so you can while it at this minute it is on but if you want to turn it off press the start button and then it goes off and what you'll notice is that the watch has gone back an hour but again if you are observing daylight same saving time just press it on and that's how you go forward an hour and that's how you turn dst on now while it's on what you'll notice is when we've come out of the adjustments dst will be shown on the main display indicating that it is being observed now to move on to the next one you press the mode button again and you've got 12 and 24 hour now for 20 to change that over in this instance it's 12 hour but to change it over to 24 hour or military time as it is known in the USA you just press the start button now that will change to 24 H and um, now what that means is when it goes up to say 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock in the afternoon the P for PM will not be shown as you can see here as we are in an afternoon time scenario the P has been removed but it will start to go to 1300 hours 1400 hours 1500 hours as you move through what would be the afternoon and evening times but if you want it to go back to 12 hour make sure you at the part of the adjustment phase where it goes where it's flashing 24 hour h and then just press it one more time and you're back in 12 hour the next one is the adjust the seconds now if you press it now when it's over 30 seconds it will add one a value of one to the minutes but if it is under 30 seconds it just resets the seconds and I'll do it one more time just so you can see it, it is just resetting the seconds and that's it really so just remember if the value is over 30 seconds it will add one to the minute next to it if it is under it just resets it as you can see there you press it again and it will allow you to adjust the hours so if you want to press start that goes forward in terms of the hour value but you can also go backward as well just in case you've gone a little bit over so in this instance it is 1227 but again remember to go forward press the start button to go back you press the light button and it's as easy as that press mode again and that will allow you to adjust the minutes mode again allows you to adjust the year so obviously forward and then backward and the same for the minutes it's just forward and backward this is to adjust what would be the month within the year so obviously you can go forward pressing that and then you can go back with that pressing that will allow you to adjust the date within the month this here is what is the mute button operation now in this instance it is mentioned mentioning that every time you press the key light for example out the outside of the adjustment scenario every time you press a button for an operation whatever you'll get a beep but if you want to turn that off while that key and the musical note is flashing 
you can just mute it. So that mute now is muting all the operations on the watch except for any predetermined alarms or countdown timers. So again, it's also highlighted when you go out the adjustment, you will just see a little musical note with a cross through it. That just means that the watch has been muted for any button operations. But to turn it back on, you go through the adjustment phase to where it says mute and then you just press it again and it will say key with a musical note and the musical note has been removed from the main display. Pressing mode one more time allows you to go through what be the light options. Now I'll show you how to operate the light, but if you want to adjust the illumination duration of the light, so this watch allows you to illuminate the backlit or backlight the display for one and a half seconds, so it's LT1. But if you want to extend that illumination duration for three seconds, you just change it to three. So what that means is every time you press the light button, it'll be a three second illumination cycle. But if you go back to pressing it for LT1, it'll be one and a half seconds. And again, I'll show you how to operate the light and what it looks like in darkness and semi darkness just after this. Moving on. Now that means power saving mode. Now from my understanding with power saving mode, if the watch is stored in the drawer or in darkness, the watch display after a certain amount of time will turn off. So that is conserving the battery within the module. If you want to turn it off, you just press that and that means power saving mode is off. If you want to turn it back on, you just turn it on that way. And what you'll notice is if it's turned off, the PS at the bottom of the display is removed. If you turn it on, the PS is featured at the bottom. And then pressing it one more time takes you back to the adjustment of the city that the timekeeping mode will be situated in. And at any part of the adjustment, you can just press adjust and it'll come straight out of it. Now you can't adjust the day within the week because it has what's known as an automatic calendar that goes up to 2099. So any date that you put in, it will automatically assign the correct day for the date that you've chosen. And that includes leap years, etc. And that's how to adjust the time, date, 12 hour, 24 hour, mute function, power saving mode, and what would be the light operation on this watch. Right, as we are talking about the light function, I might as well just show you how to operate the light function. So I'm gonna move my watch over to the left-hand side, and to the right, I'm gonna show you the two durations in which this watch operates. So it's easily operated, um, and I've shown you how to adjust it in the previous segment, uh, which is for the timekeeping mode adjustment. But to operate the light, all you gotta do is just press the light function. What you'll see there is a single uh, uh, orange LED backlight in the display, but to the right, I'm showing you what it looks like for one and a half second duration and for a three second duration. And there is a slight difference. And obviously the more that you use the LED backlight, the more that you deplete the battery. But again, I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of how the light is operated and how it looks. The next thing to talk about is the stopwatch mode. So pressing the mode button will take you to the stopwatch. Now what you'll notice on the screen, it quickly said STW and now it's changed to F120. Now the F120 value refers to the amount of data entries that are left within what's known as the lap memory on this watch. So this lap memory has 120 entries and this indicates that there's no recorded entries at this minute in time. Now what you also have is the Casio running man. Now when the op when the when I'm showing you when the stopwatch is in operation you will see the dot matrix graphic of a running man running so that indicates that the stopwatch is running. As we move down to the display of the stopwatch what you've got is a 0h that refers to hours because this watch will measure up to 100 hours of elapsed time. You've got the minutes, you've got the seconds and you've got the hundredth of a second there. Now at the bottom interestingly you've got the local time being displayed there but when you do operate the watch what you'll notice is that this will change to another unit of measurement which will be the split time what you've got there is what would be lap time as well so what I'm going to quickly show you how to do is just how to measure what would be an elapsed time so to measure the elapsed time all you do you press start and what you'll hear is a triple beep and then the next thing you'll see is these this flashing so that's obviously record one is going to be stored in there's your running man running away so just to indicate that the stopwatch is working and what you can see here is an elapsed time so if you want to just stop the elapsed time you just press stop if you want to recommence the elapsed time just press start again if you want to stop it again you press stop if you want to clear it you just press the adjust button at the top left hand corner now as you can see f118 i have now 
recorded two entries within this watch which will be the obviously the stopping and the starting of this stopwatch so they will be in what's known as recall mode which is the mode that follows this now what you can also do you can also record lap and split times as well so that is done via what is that button at the top left hand corner or the adjust button here because obviously on the back of the watch it does say lap reset so you can record lap and split times but what I thought I'd quickly show you how to do you can swap what is the predominant part of the display so obviously it's showing you lap there but you can change it to split and what will happen is when the stopwatch is running it will feature the lap time at the bottom and if you want to go back to lap time being predominant and split time at the bottom then you can just press the adjust button as so so let's start the stopwatch running and as you can see it's saying one again so it's going to start recording if you do stop the stopwatch etc it'll start recording the elapsed time but if i want to start press the adjust button it's starting to what would be record the split time or the lap time and as you can see the stopwatch is still working because the running man's still running and again if I want to measure another lap and split time you can see the different values there so as you can see the records that I'm saving are going up and as are the split times and the lap times etc or vice versa so if I just press start stop to finish and just press adjust that is how you do the split times and the lap times and don't forget you can as I've mentioned swap between the two so I'll just quickly show you I've changed it over to lap time so now the lap time is the dominant time being featured on here so again if I want to press lap and split even though the stopwatch is still running and again lap and split stopwatch is still running and then if I just leave it it will carry it will show you the time in which it's recorded through the stopwatch still running so again press start stop adjust to complete that operation and as you can see I have recorded about 14 different entries there just through showing you that little part and that is how you operate the stopwatch elapsed time and to measure the times with the stopwatch being the lap and split times on this watch now just a few things to mention the stopwatch measurement op operation will continue even if you exit the main stopwatch mode so if I just quickly show you and then just go through the different modes here back to timekeeping mode and then again, as you can see, it's still recording an elapsed time, start, stop, and then I'll finish that off. And also, if you exit the stopwatch mode while lap and split time is frozen on the display, the display will clear the lap and split time and return to an elapsed time measurement. So just bear that in mind when you are operating the stopwatch. And that is the stopwatch on the Casio LW200H in a nutshell. Now the next mode to talk about will be the recall mode. Now what you may notice is that there may be just some slight differences from what I was doing in the stopwatch and that's because I, I found out that <laughs> I didn't manage to record what I was doing in recall mode so that is my error and I'm sorry about that. So in, in recall mode what you can do is start to go through the logs that this watch has recorded. Now what you got here is the date in which the log was created, uh, you got the time and then you got the log number here. Now it will always show you the most up to date log that you've recorded via the stopwatch and that is obviously what's built into the lap memory. Now to go through the logs that you have created or to, to choose a log that you wish to look at, you just press the adjust button at the top and as you can see I've created four and they are showing different times in which they were created but obviously I've created them today so as you can see the date doesn't change now if you want to have a look in the log that you have created to see what you've done say for a lap time or a lapse time etc choose your log and then click on the start button and if you want to see any other logs or any other recorded entries within that log you just press the start button below and it will indicate so that's log th or entry three of that log and it'll show you what was the best time that you'd recorded within that segment so again just go through it and then press it once you've gone through all the the entries within that log it will take you back to the main log screen and again if I wanted to say choose log 2 I can just view what I've done within log 2 at that time and as you can see I'm just quickly going through it and then it will take you back out of that now you can also clear off the logs on this watch which is very easy to do what you're going to do is choose the log that you wish to remove let's say for ease I want to look at log four and I want to delete that just so you'll see it go down to log three when I've done that. I press the light button first and then I press the start button and you should see clear and then you'll hear a beep then that log is 
is deleted so as you can see there is now only three logs but say if I just want to clear the lot and I just want to start again really with a, a resetted uh, lap of memory of 120 entries I press the light button and then press the start button you'll see the clear and then keep your fingers on them and then it says all and then you'll get a beep to confirm it and then that's it all the recorded entries have now been deleted and that's how you use the recall mode on this watch down timer on the Casio LWS 200H now it's the next mode along from recall but obviously if you're going from the main timekeeping mode it is one two three button presses of the mode button at the bottom now what you're presented with is the timer so obviously it just said TMR and it's just gone to no zero or one or whatever numbers are there now though the countdown timer you can have a single countdown timer on this watch or you do have what's known as dual countdown timers. Now the dual countdown timers are ideal for what would be like interval training. So for example, high intensity training and stuff like that. So say for example, you set the timer on this watch for 10 minutes worth of high intensity training. When the 10 minutes have elapsed, it will start to beep. But most high people who do high intensity training do require a recovery period as well. And this watch will allow you to time that recovery period as well, or indicate when the recovery period is over. And that is via the two dual countdowns. So obviously countdown one could be high intensity training, countdown two could be your recovery period. So I'm gonna show you how to do a single countdown timer, and then I'm gonna show you how to operate the dual countdown timers on this watch. And also how to set up the amount of times it counts between the two as well. So for a single countdown timer, I want to keep the repetitions at one, and then I'll set what would be countdown timer one. Now obviously what you've got here is the number of repetitions, the minutes, which on this watch will go up to 99 minutes, then seconds, and those go up in the value of five when you are setting it. That refers to countdown timer one. So if it's countdown timer two, that will change to two. And then what you've got down underneath, which is quite handy, will be the local time or what time is featured in timekeeping mode. Now to set a single countdown timer you just press the adjust button and what you'll see it says INT1. Now INT1 refers to the countdown timer 1. So again like you would do with the uh, timekeeping mode you can change the minutes here by pressing backward and forward but I want to change the seconds so I'm going to put them down to 5 so that's going up but I want to put it down to 5 seconds just for obviously to speed up this video and then I, what I'm going to do I'm not going to change the countdown timer for number 2 I'm going to leave it as 0 so I don't want it counting down using countdown timer 2 and then go through it and then I just want to keep it as 1 because I don't need it to repeat for countdown timer 2 so I'll just come out there just press the adjust button now what you've got is obviously a 5 second countdown timer for countdown the first for the only countdown you want so you press start and you can stop it anytime you want again by pressing start but just press it one more time to start it and then what you'll hear is like a, a beep for a couple of seconds. That means that the countdown timer has reached the allotted time. Now, what I want to do is now set up a, or what I'm going to show you how to do is set up the dual countdown timers and the amount of repetitions. So in this case, I'm going to set up three repetitions and both countdown timers will be five seconds long. So again, press the adjust button. So this would be countdown timer one. So if you wanted to treat it as what be your high intensity training countdown timer, Again, I've done it as five seconds, so I'll just leave it as it is by pressing the mode button. Interval training or countdown timer two is indicated there. Again, I just want to move it over for five seconds. And now I can amend or I will amend the amount of times I want it to repeat. So I'm going to put it up to three this time and then press the adjust button to come out of it. So what you'll see, it says naught of three. So the naught refers to how many times the, the countdown timer has reached a phase as it will or how many times it's repeated and that's how many times you want it to repeat so if I start the countdown timer you will see it says one and then you'll hear the first countdown timer beep then obviously it's now doing countdown timer two and you'll hear a beep so that's obviously shown now this is on the second repetition and again countdown timer two And now this is countdown time or repetition three, so it's countdown timer one. And this is the final countdown timer.
and there you get you get that prolonged beep for a couple of seconds and that is that's it it will stop there and that's how you set the single countdown timer and dual countdown timers including the amount of times you want to repeat it on this very watch right the next mode to show you is the world time mode and it is as you just it, it just follows what would be the countdown time mode so you just press the mode button once but then if you are in the timekeeping mode just be aware that you've got to press the mode button a couple of times just to get to world time which was indicated by wt at the top now what world time allows you to do is to view the current time in 48 different cities or what would be 31 time zones around the world now it is just remember this time is based on whatever time you have set and the city you have set in timekeeping mode so if you want to learn how to do that it is just towards the start of the video or near the start of the video i have listed time codes below just so if you want to just hop back to how to adjust that part of the watch the world time is easy to operate you can go through the cities by just pressing the start button so it will go eastwards as you press this button so new york city i'm just trying to find ones that i recognize um rio um that is universal time lisbon london madrid paris rome etc so i could go on berlin now that is how you go through the amount of cities that this watch has got built into the module now if you want to observe daylight saving time in one of these cities you can easily do so just by pressing the adjust button for a couple of seconds and what you'll hear is a little audio audible beep if you've got the beeps turned on and also you will see the arrow's gone up by one and it does mention daylight saving time so if berlin's honoring the daylight saving time then you can do it for that if you want to turn it off easily done just by pressing the adjust button again you can do so now if you want to just quickly hop to what is known as universal time you can easily do so by pressing these two buttons together and it'll take you straight to universal time now with the universal time you can't turn on what would be daylight saving time for this part of the time codes that are built into this watch and then again if you want to just carry on going through the different times it can be done via the start button there and that is the world time in the nutshell now if you are in the timekeeping you can access the alarm modes by pressing the mode button a couple of times and that will take you to where it says ALM now at the top it changed from ALM to AL1 now that this watch has five different alarms or independent alarms and it also has an hourly signal which you can operate now I'm going to just show you how to set one alarm and I'm also going to just show you how to activate that alarm or turn it off and I'm also going to show you how to operate or well turn on turn off the hourly signal the other alarms will follow suit really now to scroll through your alarms you just press the start button so that's alarm 2 alarm 3 alarm 4 the snooze alarm or alarm 5 with snooze and the hourly signal to go back to alarm one there you are AL1 to activate the alarm you just press adjust and as you can see there's a little symbol towards the top right hand corner and you've got the word on next to it to turn it off you just press the adjust button again and that's it turned off now if you want to adjust the time on the alarm mode you just keep finger on the adjust button and then if you want to change it so if I want to change it to what would be half seven in the morning so in this instance it is seven am and then obviously it is going to be 30 so again you just do it how you would do the other modes or the adjustment of the time on the other modes i've gone a bit over so i've just gone back one by pressing that and if you are in the 24 hour mode you can it will respect that fact so obviously i'm in 12 hour mode so it's indicated by p but it will if you are in 24 hour mode go by hundreds of hours so like it'll say 1500 hours etc but i'm going to go back to half seven to wake up for work and then that's it so you just press the adjust button again and that is how you adjust alarm one if you want to adjust alarm two you just go through the same process same with alarm three same with alarm four alarm five with the snooze and obviously back to alarm one now what you'd probably notice is that alarm one when i've adjusted it it's gone on straight away but if i just want to turn it off i just press the adjust button and that's it that's the alarm turned off if i want to set the hourly signal so on the hour every hour the watch will be i just scroll through to what would be the hourly signal here or as you can see it says sig and double zero and then i just press the adjust button and that is now on now what you'll notice if i go back to timekeeping mode you'll see the little bell there now that will go that'll be indicated through whatever mode you are in but again if you want to go through to the alarm mode i am on the signal part but again you can just quickly scroll through to what would be the signal part and then press the adjust button at the top to turn it off and again as you can see the icon has disappeared 
And that is how you set the alarm mode on this watch. One of the little Easter egg on this watch that I'm gonna just share with you. And that is how to do demo mode. Now demo mode, is the screen will cycle through the normal timekeeping, stopwatch, world time screens, etc., in five second intervals. And that can be easily started by holding down what will be the mode button here. Keep your finger down on it. And as you can see, you are now in demo mode. So obviously if you use this, put this watch in a shop or on display, then that's what this demo mode is ideal for. But if you want to turn it off, you just press any button to exit it. And that's demo mode on this watch. And that's it, as I say, that's the watch in a nutshell. If there is anything I haven't covered, then there is a link to this watch instructions in the description box below. And that will take you straight off to the Casio website where you can view a PDF and you can go through and just find the part of the watch that you wasn't sure of. And I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about the, the Casio LWS200H. And if it has, and, you, and you've found this video of some value, then please click on the like button, it always helps the channel. If you want to see more videos from the We Try Anything channel, then please click on the subscription button below. And thank you for watching this tutorial video on the Casio LWS200H. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.